everybody! This is Charlize the Nocti Girl. Today I'm going to talk about why this has been my only Leica lens to use on foreign bodies for the past eight years. So I first found out about the Noctilux lens back in college when the professor in the photography class talked about lens design such as the different elements and groups, how different lenses contained aspherical elements and what that meant, etc. At a time when I was shooting with school equipment and f2.8 was considered a very fast lens, he brought up the Leica 50mm f1.2 Noctilux lens. Now, I'd always been obsessed with shallow depth of field, or bokeh, and I could only imagine the kind of bokeh you can produce at f1.2. So I had that lens stuck in my head for a long time, and it became the Ferrari or Lamborghini I promised myself that I owned one day. Fast forward to 2016, and I was finally ready to own that Noctilux. I then realized how expensive the 1.2 was. Besides selling some gear, I'd also need to sell my car and probably some organs to afford it. That's when I came across the 0.95. It's even faster than the 1.2. So I bought it and I was the happiest woman on earth. I was so happy that I had a pretend wedding ceremony with him. Yes, him. I even reached out to Andreas Kaufman, the chairman of Leica on Facebook, and professed my love to him and my Noctilux. No, he didn't respond to my messages. He probably thought I was crazy, but he did accept my friend request, which made me feel like the most important woman alive. I promised myself that I wouldn't buy another Leica lens until I've mastered my precious Nocti. Anyway, 8 years and 4M camera bodies later, I think I might be ready for another lens at a different focal length. Probably something wider. But for now, I'd like to share my thoughts and experiences of shooting this lens almost exclusively for 8 years and some considerations if you're looking to marry one as well. This is the most common complaint I hear from people. The 0.95 Noctilux is huge and heavy. I'm not refuting that. It's at least twice the weight of a 50 Sumalux and almost three times the weight of a 50 Sumacron. But you simply cannot produce these kinds of images with those alternatives. A Noctilux photo always stands out to me. Look at the separation between the subject and the background. Don't the subject look so three-dimensional? Also, look at the bokeh. Just so soft and dreamy. There aren't that many lenses out there that produce bokeh like this. Also, I'm 5'2 and 110 pounds. If I can do it, you can too. This is another common complaint I hear from people. Focus is quite challenging at 0.95, but nothing worthwhile comes easy. It takes hard work and practice to become good at something. Oftentimes I get people telling me that they bought the Noctilux but sold it after two weeks because the focus is impossible. If you expect to become an expert at shooting the lens after two weeks, this is not the lens for you. Since I started shooting a lens, I've learned to appreciate shots that are intact sharp, but are well composed and still tell the story. Sharpness isn't everything. Also, focus isn't impossible. Check out these shots that I did in a very dark environment where the only available light was street lights. This was done at 4 a.m. in the morning in New York City. We were shooting a short film and I was getting some behind the scenes shots. The focus is even harder when it's hard to see anything with your naked eyes. It's settings like these that really allow the lens to shine. 
Yes, it's true. Chromatic aberration is horrible with this lens, especially when you shoot the subject against a bright background. Sometimes the subject could be outlined entirely in purple or green, but this is usually easily fixable in Lightroom with the defringe adjustments. There could be times where the defringe adjustment doesn't resolve the problem, then I would bring the image into Photoshop to manually remove the color fringing. If even that doesn't work, I change the image to black and white. Also, I found that chromatic aberration isn't as bad on film. It still happens, but just not as bad. So when you know you'll be shooting your subjects against bright backgrounds, maybe you can consider shooting film instead. It could be a bit annoying when the minimum focus distance is one meter. With the capability of creating such crazy bokeh, you'd probably want to get as close to your subjects as possible. Well, you can. Some people prefer extension tubes, but I personally love these close-up lenses. Mine are from B&W, and they come in four strengths so you can get as close to your subjects as you want. They're small, lightweight, and so easy to travel with. I carry all four of them in this filter pouch and slip it in my camera bag. I actually made a video on how I use these lenses and you can check it out here. Yes, you'll need to bring extra ND filters when you shoot the Noctilux. Well, that's if you want to shoot it wide open most of the time. A three-stop ND is usually enough for me when I shoot digital work as digital end bodies have a maximum shutter speed of four thousandths of a second. You might need a six-stop or a nine-stop ND when you shoot film since film M cameras only go up to one thousandths of a second. But that's only one or two more filters to slip in your filter pouch that's already carrying your close-up lenses anyway. Easy peasy! It's funny because I actually get quite a few people asking me if I ever stop down and I give them the most Peter Carbo response, stop down for what? Jokes aside, I really only stop down when I absolutely have no other options. For example, to avoid getting my shots blown out because I forgot to bring my ND filters. Wait, have I mentioned how much I love, love, love this lens? The 0.95 can be super sharp when closed down, but it creates that beautiful bokeh at wide open. Check out this pano stitch I did. This is a stitch of about 7 to 8 shots at portrait orientation. I don't do this often with the lens, but I wanted to see how a pano stitch would look like with the Nocti. Not bad! Here are some more examples of why I love this lens so much. Check out the beautiful bokeh in these images. I get withdrawal symptoms every time I put down the lens. What are your thoughts about the Noctilux? Leave me a comment down below. Also, I'll be making another video on how I use the Noctilux and provide some tips and tricks for those of you wanting to get the most out of this high performance lens. Stay tuned! Alrighty, you've been unbelievably knocked up today and I'm really knocked out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!